Hello everyone, this is Jim Ogrzynski with your week 11 screencast video. So as I mentioned here in my announcement, I'm moving the due date uh, for discussion board 14 to Wednesday, November 4th. Since Tuesday, November 3rd is election day. If you have any applications, you want to stand in line and vote um, to exercise your civic duty. Uh, this, you won't have to worry about completing the discussion board on that day. You can move that over to Wednesday, Friday, the initial post for discussion board 15, which will be our example essay analysis. And next week we'll return to our regular schedule because it's just for this week only. So uh, that is our week 11 activity. So I'd like to get over to discussion board number 14. <clears throat> Scroll down, discussion board 14. So um, I ask everyone to review the section on using and citing sources, pages 13 to 15. I'm going to get to that in, in a minute. But my instructions are is using two of your sources, two of the three that you discovered for in your research, which is basically discussion board 13. Uh, select two quotes, two really significant quotes that help, relevant quotes that help you support your um, argument topic there and build two paragraphs using the strategies described in the textbook about your topic. Uh, think of this activity as a pre-writing for your essay draft. In other words, I'm looking for you to build a quote hamburger within the paragraph. So if I get to chapter, I should say, it's chapter one, essay basics, page 13, I have my using and citing sources section here. I urge everyone to uh, read the overview. I also have two YouTube video links embedded into the textbook where it's understanding plagiarism and how to use a documentation style guide. Both are about five minutes long uh, from the University of Minnesota and are very straightforward and informative. What I want to emphasize here is the principles of citation. So I have three principles. The first principle is introduce your sources. You want to let the reader know, your audience know who the speaker is, is who the speaker is for your quoted or paraphrased uh, information. Um, always introduce a speaker according to William Smith. Then you can go into the quote. Uh, we need to know who's speaking. Never, ever begin a sentence with a pair of quotation marks, then a whole quote with some sort of parenthetical at the end of a quote just because you need to use a quote. You want to introduce the speaker, provide some context for that quote and how it's going to be relevant to your topic. And then afterwards, you're going to want to make sure that you show the ending point, which is principle number two. We want to know where information starts and stops. It's very, very important that you clearly mark the beginning and ending points of your quoted material. So that way we know what is uh, an outside speaker and information source. Also, what is you, right? So I've got a couple of examples here. And the last important principle of cite using and citing sources is the cross-reference. If you have a writer or author's name in your in-text citation to introduce uh, your quoted material, then there has to be a corresponding citation using that same author. Here I have a couple of examples. You can read through the examples. I have Peroni, Peroni, Dowlin, Dowlin. I have to have a cross-reference for your sources. That's pretty much mandatory. And then I have an additional uh, video here about MLA 8th edition style. So, and right below using and citing sources and the principles, I talk about using a quote hamburger. So every quote, which we consider the meat, needs a lead in, right? And the lead in is the top of the bun and an explanation or relevance, uh, bottom of the bun to make the hamburger. So. You want to provide the lead in. Every paragraph is going to have a topic sentence. You're going to introduce the speaker and provide context for that source material. You're going to use your quote, which is the meat. And the bottom of the bun is going to be your commentary, your analysis, your evaluation of how that particular source material fits the relevance to your topic and how it supports it. So you always want to use strong verbs to write your lead ins. So I have verbs for making a claim. I have verbs for disagreeing. So take a look at some of my template verbs here and how you can use those to help build a strong paragraph, a strong quote 
hamburger in discussion board 14 and ultimately you'll be successful in uh, bringing that over to your uh, essay draft all right so I have pages 13 to 15 critical videos are about five minutes I urge everyone to watch the videos that are embedded into the textbook here to be ready to write discussion board 14 I will cover discussion board 15 the essay example analysis on our lecture uh, video this week where I'll talk about the organizational structure that you can find in the textbook for SA3. All right, that's all I have for tonight's screencast video. Good luck. Stay safe out there.